Kevin back again here. Finally, the fabric came in for the dining room chairs on the outside back. And I'm going to use this beautiful purple cut velvet on the outside back of the restoration hardware chairs and replace everything else that I took off. So come on in. So uh, my purple cut velvet, you know, folks, you want to make sure I have this marked as the top. You want to make sure that the nap is always going down on an outside back or an inside back and to the front on a seat. We're only doing the outside back on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that that's going that way and it flips this way because this is a recessed outside back, meaning that you can uh, see it from the outside, but it's recessed. So what has to happen is um, the back has to be put on, the outside back has to be put on backwards so that when you lift it up, you'll be able to see just the fabric. So that's why everything else had to come off as we talked about and you saw in part one. So now what I'm going to do is, I, I'm not just simply going to staple this on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it and staple it. Fold it up and staple it. Okay? And I want to, I don't have much room, as you, know, as you recall on part one. Uh, we don't have much room, so we're going to try to get all these components in here, limited on the wood rail. Okay, but this is going to be nice and tight. Okay, I'm going to pull. First, I'm going to I folded and stapled on the bottom, but on the top I'm going to stretch, staple, stretch, staple, and then I'm going to fold. I'll show you that in a minute. And I'm trying to space these out a little bit. I'm always checking to see if I came through on the other side. It's not a good thing if that happens. You'll have to repair the chair if that happens. So I'm always checking on each layer that I put on. I'm always checking. You'll see me bring this chair up and, and check. Okay, so on one side, I'm going to trim this side up a little bit. You don't want any more than like a half of an inch or a three quarter of an inch for fold or an inch. This is fine, actually. An inch is okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this, double fold at the bottom here and staple. And then I'm going to stretch up to almost to the top. And then that will allow me to go ahead and staple all along the side. And up at the top, I'm going to do a little bit more trimming up at the top, especially at the corners. I don't want too much bulk. I might even do a little extra cut out there. Okay, and a double fold up at the top to finish it off. And then this piece that we stretched with that gets folded in half. So again, I'm going to look to make sure no staple has come through. No staples come through. So we're pretty good there. To get skillful at this gun, you can do these things. In the old days, we used tacks. You can imagine how hard that was with tacks. Okay, so this is my stretch side over here, folks. I'm going to stretch it. This doesn't need as much stretch as if you were stretching on the springs, but you can almost see, you see how that's wrinkled there? I'm stretching that out. Make sure nothing came through. Good. I'm going to trim this up a little bit. I'm going to staple this. Take a peek. I don't trust looking at it. I want to feel for any staple that's come through. Don't trust your eyes. And that's nice and taut. Now, we're going to put some webbing on this because in the, in the last one uh, they had wood in here, which I don't approve of. Um, I, I like to put webbing and um, I think that that's the best support for an inside back like this. So what I'm going to do though, before I put the webbing on, I'm going to put like a buffer in between the webbing and the fabric so that you don't see the outline of the webbing. Okay, so, so that's just a Dacron, that's a half a layer Dacron. You don't want to put too much in here. Uh, or if you're going to use cotton, you can use either one. You could use a half layer of cotton. Okay, now that I have that in here, I'm going to take my webbing. And now on the webbing, we do have to fold it. We're going to fold the webbing also. Okay, I'm feeling for the edge of the wood. I'm trying to angle my gun a little bit so that the staples are going in towards the chair and they're not skimming outside to the outside. I'm going to check that. So far, so good. 
And then I'm going to use a webbing stretcher to stretch this out. You've seen those in my other videos. You want to be careful though. You don't want to overstretch this because this is this rail is not like the bottom of the seat where it's stronger. Stretch that. Okay. Before I go to the next step, let's see, make sure that no staples are coming through. The worst thing is to get the whole thing done and then have one one of the bottom layer staples come through the outside. Not a good thing. Take the whole thing apart again. Okay. Very good. I'm going to take a piece that's sideways. Just one would do it. This, this is a very small space. I feel okay about putting just two pieces of work in here. And I'm going to hand stretch this side. So I get most of my stretch up and down where I want. Check this again. Good. And good. I'm going to cut this. Put that underneath there. And finish table. Okay. So I'm going to use the foam that was in here without padding. Now normally folks, I would put padding over this, but we have to copy what the manufacturer did here because I have very limited amount of fabric um, that I can use on this because I had to take the old fabric off that was, that was trimmed. So if I put, add uh, that little Dacron that I already added is going to be challenging enough. So we're not going to put padding over this. Not my choice, it's just, just the way it is. I'm get a couple of staples into the foam so it doesn't move on me. And I, I'm going to check another time. Okay, here we go. Here's the old inside back with still the glue on it. Um, we're hoping that I can get it lined up with the glue, with the old glue, so that my glue will just melt that and put that double piping back on. A little tricky, but I think we can do it. so good. Okay, so what I'm going to do with my regulator now is just go along here to tuck some of these threads back in and some of the glue, some of the old glue that was on there. See how nice and it goes right into that groove? That's nice. That's going to help. There's a staple there I can get. It's going to help the glue, the new glue and the new double piping go in there pretty well. plugged in. Now I, I remembered from the last time that 
piping starts at the lower, if you're looking at the chair, the lower right corner, it's, it's important to, to line it up the same way as it came off. And I also remembered that it, it butt in this way and that they didn't, they only cut it at an angle, which makes my job just a little harder. There's no extra material in other words, okay? So what I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at this corner and then I might be able to stretch it over there. So that's a good practice. So I'm going to start right at this corner. And I'm going to, uh, when you put hot glue gun on folks, make sure you're careful. It, it is hot. <laughs> and you want to spread uh, the glue with the head of the gun onto the piece. You know that really the old glue melted very nicely and that, that took very well. Uh, on, the other, on the other video you'd notice that the glue um, wasn't completely um, dry. I mean, um, the glue was not uh, hot enough when it came out of the gun, I could tell. And that double piping came off really easy. It made my job easy, but this is going to be an industrial gun that we're using and set on high. Okay? Makes a difference. Um, you m need to make sure that your glue is hot enough to do the job. Okay? So if this ever happens to be done again, they're, they're not going to get this double piping off as easy as I got the last off. Um, of course, the flip side to that is your, your glue is very hot. It comes out that it will burn. Um, the guns that are on the market, the glue guns that are on the market are not made to burn, but they don't glue. So they're not hot enough on purpose. They don't want people getting really burnt. This, this is probably second degree burns if you get it on you. So you, if you do get glue on you, very quickly take it off. Very quickly take it off. You should be fine. Doesn't hurt to have calluses for sure. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I'm just gonna keep gluing along here. I'm not gonna go too far ahead. I'm gonna go a couple of inches at a time. I'm gonna nestle it in there nice. Some people will have, um, you can use almost anything even your hand, just to kind of hit it down. It's really going on nice, I'm really happy with this. Yeah, the, the, that glue that is in there is melting as I'm putting it on. And it's taken the double piping well. And I'm going to go grab a hammer. Magnetic hammer. And um, just as I go along, I'm going to be tapping. Right? So I see a little pucker there that I don't like. So I'm going to take care of that now. I'm going to take care of that with a couple of staples. Just a little loose there. Catch it now before the thing is done. It'll be okay. There we go. That's good. See this this piping is a little on the um, it's it's a little frayed, so I'm gonna take a little glue on this side, dab. I'm gonna bring it over like so. I did that with my hand and I hit glue. I got glue, I didn't yell, I just took it off like so. Rolled it off. If you keep it on there, you're going to yell. But there's no crying in upholstery like baseball. So if you do get it and it hurts, don't cry. We don't, we don't want to see people cry. happy with this. You never know until you start doing it. It's going to be okay. I'm melting this glue. It's really key to this. It's actually, it's a very, this fabric frays a lot, so that old cover that was on there, uh, I was fortunate that the glue was still on there because I wouldn't have been able to get this fabric off without fraying so much that I couldn't reuse it. So if something peeks through like old glue or whatever, it, and while, it, while it's still drying, you kind of want to use your regulator. See there's a piece of glue that I'm just going to flake off. It's really good. You know, I'm only as good as the last person who did this too. Um, you know, the double piping, like I said, was cut a little short. I'm going to have to work with that when I get down there. It's not the way I would have done it, but 
That's the difference between real custom upholsters and you know people in a factory setting who who are being trained to mass produce, and they, they don't know. Um, one of the subtleties. There's a lot of subtleties in upholstery that make for a better job. Those little subtle things that we do make for a better job. It's custom upholsters, I mean. Look at that, huh? Not unhappy with the way this is coming out. Okay, I see. I need to get another staple in here. To make sure. I'm going to give another check back here to make sure we got another staple coming through. Nope. putting this piping on uh, the first time you preform the corner put the glue on and then just kind of lay it out like that very nice take this. Not like this I see a little pocket here so I'm gonna do a little quality control here before I get, get to that spot I'll take this staple up and give this a little Don't like that either. I'm being fussy now. I'm gonna take this out. Well, you have to be fussy, right? The pain, yeah. There we go. Can't deal with that. Let's do this. Keep going along here. Yeah, this, this is coming out just fine. I mean, this isn't an easy job. Right? Any type of repair work on upholstery, you risk uh, making mistakes and not having enough fabric, etc. Okay, I'm going to make sure that I have enough down here. I'm going to actually see this frayed open on me, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dab a little glue there. I'm anticipating a little bit. That hurt. But you see how quick I was taking the glue off? Quickly take it off your fingers. Be surprised with the pain. People look at it and go, oh my gosh, I'm burning. And I mentioned this in another YouTube video. But don't do that. <laughs> quickly take it off. Quickly. It'll it'll come right off. You know, some people don't want to get it on their clothes, so have a piece of cloth handy to rub it on. That's why this is, that's why I have cloth tables. One of the reasons. Makes it adhere, but it also spreads the, the piping out a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to stretch this down a little bit after. Show you what I mean by that. Give this a good stretch. And get my regulator handy, and I'm going to tuck. Look at that. Look at that. You know, I'm holding my breath for this piece, right? So I'm going to really stretch this piece to get it to, to come underneath here. But before I do that, I'm going to get a little bit of dab of glue on here. Like I said, I'd rather see this as a folded piece of fabric at the end, but it isn't. It's just been cut. It's the quick, easy way of doing things. So that, that fixed up pretty nice, but I need to make sure that, see, if I were just to put this on like this, I think it wouldn't, wouldn't be long enough. So I'm going to stretch this over like this, see? So I'm going to be aware of that when I come over here. Start stretching it. Stretch. Make sure it's going on the right way. Hopefully, 
have just enough glue in hand to finish the job. Wow, that was close. Tuck that in there and take the regulator. Get that in like that. And that finishes it. And let's turn it up right, take a look at our job. Okay, let's see if all that hard work paid off. I certainly hope no staple came through. I, I'm certainly hoping that I didn't use a damaged part of the velvet. Um, really open, keep your fingers crossed. Let's turn and take a look. Oh no, it's all defected. Just kidding. This is a cut velvet, and that's exactly what a cut velvet should look like. It's a real design fabric. So this is a designer's choice. This is actually the back side of the fabric that you're seeing here. So they just eliminate the velvet part to, to give this effect. Uh, some people love this. Um, so we, we, our naps go on the right way. Thank you. No defects other than the, the, the inherent one. And um, I'm going to rub my finger along to make sure that there are no staples coming out. There you go. That's one down, five more to go. Olay! 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 Olay!